All right, so we got a good look at the repitch mode. We also discussed the parameters in the sample window here, except for one that I wanna be clear about. Uh, I mentioned how I had a little pop at the end of my sample and I used the loop crossfade here in order to help me get rid of that. Another tool that we have to get rid of little pops that might occur at the beginning and end of our loops is the snap to zero crossings option, which is right here. Uh, in case you're not familiar, if I go to a part of this sample and I zoom in a bit, here we go. You can see at a certain point, we see the waveform, it goes up, comes down, and then it goes down below this little center line. When the waveform crosses this line right in the middle, uh, this is the zero point crossing. And the idea is that at the beginning and the end of our loop, uh, both line up right at that zero point crossing, uh, we will more than likely avoid any pops and clicks when the sample actually loops. So that's what this option helps you do. And that in combination with the crossfade uh, has solved my problem. So we're all good there. Now, what I wanna check out next is the cycles mode. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna choose cycles. Now we can see in the description, it says it uses cycles of the source as a wavetable. So what it's doing is it's taking little snapshots of the waveform as it plays and it uses those as a wavetable. And using the controls that it shows you, we have a speed and a formant control. Uh, we can change the timbre of the sample. Uh, we can get some very interesting sounds with this. Now, going to cycles, I'm gonna play the same note I was just playing with repitch. All right, we hear it playing back quite quickly. Uh, now, one thing I'm gonna point out is that we see up here the key tracking is on. So as I play the sample at different pitches on my keyboard, So we hear that the playback speed is not being affected. Uh, no matter what pitch that I play this at, it's playing back at the same speed. So what happens if we reduce the speed? Okay, now with the speed at 1%, it's moving through the sample very, very slowly. Let's go ahead and bring up the expanded view here so we can really see what's going on. Okay, nice, nice and big. So, as we're moving through the sample, I will adjust the format control. And you can hear the amount of variety we're able to get by changing this synth sound into what is essentially a, a morphing wavetable. So now with it playing like this, let's say I wanted to play some chords with it. It's pretty nice, pretty nice. Now again, with the speed control, uh, this can go into negative numbers as well, so we could play this backwards if we wanted to. Let me go ahead and just zoom out a bit, like so. There we go. Now what happens if we disable key tracking. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And now I'm gonna play the sample back. Let me go ahead and play it at the regular speed. I just double clicked here to reset this to its default value. So that's the regular speed with the format up rather high. So now if we reduce the speed here. So if I play different notes on the keyboard now, Anyway, that's a lot of fun. So the point is, is that with cycles, we can take any sample. Uh, I've had a lot of fun actually throwing different drum samples in here, uh, playing them back at very, very slow speeds, or as we will later see, freezing the playhead position uh, and just getting some really nice, bizarre textures out of them. So again, with cycles, we're basically grabbing periods of the waveform 
and creating wavetables out of those. And we can adjust the timbre with the form and control uh, and adjust the speed, the playback speed of our sample with the aptly named speed knob. So with that said, let's next check out the textures mode and get some granular time stretching popping. <laughs> 